Facebook targeted QAnon ads towards those interested in alternative health, resulting in what academics have identified as, quote, conspirituality. This is a strange blend of the New Age movement and right-wing conspiracy theories. The merger of these seemingly paradoxical influences can be traced back to David Icke, who has introduced into conventional conspiracy theories a blend of New Age and theosophical ideas, which have long had a close relationship with the likes of fascism, and in particular Nazism, effectively through the influence of QAnon and the advent of Kof Kof, Ike's message is gaining increasing appeal within the New Age movement, who have adopted his right-wing conspiracy theories such that they have come to identify the left as the enemy of political and spiritual freedom. Merging their New Age beliefs, they hope to prevent the advent of a quote, New World Order, and to assist instead in a quote, ascension to the utopian promises of the Age of Aquarius, which in fact is the true goal of the Luciferian fascist conspiracy. There are many examples of what makes up the term conspirituality. One most prominent American example is QAnon. One of the major supporters of QAnon has been Major General Paul E. Valley. In 1980, Valley wrote a Mind War article with a guy called Michael Aquino, who was a former member of the Church of Satan who founded the Temple of Set. Aquino's satanic activity was connected to a paedophile and blackmail network with ties to the White House. The operation was run by Edwin Wilson, a member of Ted Shackley's team of rogue CIA agents known as the Secret Team, who were linked with the JFK assassination, the Golden Triangle, heroin trade, and the Iran-Contra affair. Nevertheless, Falle backed QAnon. He claimed the existence of a, quote, deep state operated by a satanic paedophile network, who are supposedly being opposed by a group within the government and military referred as, quote, white hats. Falle was interviewed by Mike Phillip on Americanuk, Internet Radio of Canada, on October 14th, 2019, where he explained, quote, QAnon is information that comes out of a group called the Army of Northern Virginia. This is a group of military intelligence specialists of over 800 people that advises the president. The president does not have a lot of confidence in the CIA and the, or the DIA much anymore. So the president relies on real operators who are mostly special operations types of people. This is where Q picks up some of his information, end quote. So what is QAnon? It is disinformation. And as most of these conspiratorial narratives go, they all do the following. To deceive those who suspect the world around them may not be as it seems, but to those who may not be sufficiently informed about the true nature of the conspiracy, to discern the deception itself. The reason for the conspiracy to have been able to proceed unchecked has not been attributable to any lack of documentation or public exposure. Sufficient literature has been produced to bring to light the activities of the conspirators and their identities, including... One, John Robinson's book, Proof of a Conspiracy, written in 1797, Augustin Barul's memoirs illustrating the history of Jacobinism, and more recently, Nestor Webster's Secret Societies and Subversive Movements, written in 1924. So we shouldn't be overly enthusiastic about the proliferation of, quote, conspiracy theory among the alternative media in recent years. There are many reasons for the inability of a significant enough opposition to coalesce against the conspiracy. Primary among them being, of course, the elite control of the media on all levels. However, the opposition that has been able to form has not been able to blossom into a broader movement, largely because of internal disunity. Part of the reason for this confusion is what appears to be disinformation campaigns to hijack any growing opposition to the conspiracy, as is revealed 
in the recent six-volume book, Ordab Cow by David Livingstone. The key modus operandi of the conspiracy has been to deploy what he calls a, quote, conspiracy conspiracy. It is a deliberate attempt to cultivate an errant interpretation of the conspiracy to create a controlled opposition of naive dissidents who were ultimately recruited into inadvertently serving the conspiracy. This is by definition what conspirituality is all about. And there are many popular dissident public figures who are most likely involved in this. The reason this happens, as it has happened in history before, is that it is those who are dismayed with the direction our societies have taken tend to become desperate for change and too ready to throw in their support with anyone who appears to represent their interests. They look at a leader's words, not what they stand for, which makes them easily duped. This is not just happening now, as I have said, but has happened many times before in history. The tactic, you could call it, dates back to at least the Enlightenment and the fomenting of the French and American revolutions by rallying the masses into believing they were fighting, quote, tyranny. In the person of the aristocracy and the Catholic Church, or King George III of England. The same tactic was uh, employed by, for example, by using the cause of communism to channel the Russian people's frustration against the state to bring about the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. Most importantly, the Nazis made use of the notorious Protocols of Zion, which purported that the Russian Revolution was the outcome of a worldwide Judeo-Masonic conspiracy, something which then popularised to then frighten the Germans into accepting Hitler's fascist dictatorship to prevent the same happenings to their country. This was despite the fact that the Nazis were funded by the same bankers who funded the Bolsheviks. So let's get into some of these new age conspiritual hijackers, if you will. Who are they, and what is the fundamental belief system, ultimately? What is the belief system? Ultimately, David Icke's message, like that of the new age itself, spells consequences with fascist overtones. Possibly foreboding a new holocaust intended for the, quote, fundamentalists of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, who refuse to adapt their age-old faiths for the ucomensium of the New Age movement, who knows? By example, according to New Age or occult interpretation, the Atlanteans were destroyed because of their transgressions. Likewise, despite their wishy-washy claims of universal brotherhood and tolerance, the New Age warns of a coming, quote, ascension, when all those who resist the transformation promised by the Age of Aquarius, will be destroyed. Betraying these same fascist tendencies, Alice Bailey warned, quote, Let us never forget that it's life, its purpose, and its directed intentional destiny that's of importance. And also, that when a form proves inadequate, or too diseased, or too crippled for the expression of that purpose, it is, from the point of view of the hierarchy, No disaster when that form has to go. Death is not a disaster to be feared. The work of the destroyer is not really cruel or undesirable. Therefore, there is much destruction permitted by the custodians of the plan, and much evil turned into good. Similarly, according to David Icke, quote, I do not seek to hide the severity of this period of fundamental change. It will be tough for every one of us. Many will return to light levels, die, in the wake of the physical events and the quickening vibrations. The earth spirit is already rising up the subplanes, and through the years ahead, she will progress through the whole frequencies in her journey back to Atlantis and beyond. Those who cannot quicken their own vibrations through love and balance, will find themselves out of synchronization with the environment around them. This process is already apparent. It is very revealing 
how those who are supposedly, quote, fighting for freedom, speak very similar words to what the, quote, new world order agenda, which they say they are fighting against, also look up to, such as Alice Bailey, who is the new age guru for the United Nations, or theosophy in general open-minded to any kind of possibility. To be at the summit of our evolutionary possibility, we have to live beyond the dead model of our animal selves, of our urgent primal selves. The distinctions between you and I, we know that they are an illusion. We share the same DNA. There are invisible energies that are passing between us. These invisible energies have to be harnessed and accessed because it's the only truth that matters. We've got a duty to come together to get over our superficial differences. We think that there's an infinite creative force that generates all consciousness and all matter and we are all connected and if you align yourself with this internet creative force then you can be positive and you can be beautiful. I don't think it's a, a, a personal god, I don't believe in any particular doctrine or dogma, only that humanity is connected. Now this is the, this is the greatest form of um, imprisonment, it's what I call the prison without the bars. What happened was eventually the colonial powers of Europe, like the British Empire, they reached the point with their colonies around the world where they could no longer hold on to that power overtly because the people were starting to kick up a stink. There's two forms of dictatorship. There's one that you can see, touch, taste and experience. Uh, fascism, communism, whatever. Centralization of power with a dictator and you know he's a dictator. It may take some time, but eventually the desire for freedom in the human heart will rebel against that um, kind of dictatorship because you can see it, you can focus on it. The greatest form of dictatorship is the hidden hand, which gives you the illusion of freedom while fundamentally controlling your lives because people do not rebel against not being free when they believe they are. So like I say, what happened was when the colonial powers apparently pulled out of North America, pulled out of Africa, pulled out of Asia and Australia and all these other countries, they left behind their secret society network and the bloodlines that they're so obsessed with and they have gone on controlling those countries ever since while the people of those countries have believed they were free. The prison without the bars. Um, and this spider's web I'm talking about allows that process to happen. And the spider, that which is really calling the shots, really orchestrating the centralization of global power, the fascist state, is not um, among those that we see. If you can see them, they're still gophers. Maybe powerful gophers on the level they operate, like Bush or or Blair or whatever, but they're still gophers. The people really behind this, you never see, because why are they going to put themselves on public display where they can be identified and targeted? In 1989, Ike began to feel a presence around him, he says, and in 1990, a voice told him to look in a bookstore at a particular section of books, one of which was of Betty Shine, a psychic healer. When he met her, Shine told him that she had a message for him from Wang Yi Li, a being who, she said, looked like a Chinese Mandarin and had Socrates standing next to him, that Ike had been sent to heal the earth and that the spirit world was going to pass ideas to him. Ike decided in 1991 to visit the pre-Inca Sulistani burial ground near Peru where he became fixated at a certain mound in a circle of stones and felt a number of powerful sensations and new ideas began to pour into him. He described it later as the Kundalini exploding up through his spine, activating his brain and his chakra, triggering a high level of consciousness. He then returned to England and began to write a book about the experience, which he then titled Truth Vibrations. Ike wrote that he had been channeling for some time and had received a message through automatic writings that he was a quote son of the godhead interpreting godhead as the quote infinite mind 
As revealed in an excellent documentary by Chris White called David Icke Debunked, Icke claims to be imparted with insights from a spiritual entity named Rakorsky, who he also identifies with the, the name Saint Germain. Rakorsky is none other than Bailey's master Rakorsky, identified by Alice Bailey as the master tasked with establishing the age of Aquarius. Ike calls him the Lord of all creation, saying that he is, quote, directly responsible for the changes the earth will undergo, end quote. Especially Ike, like other conspiracy researchers, such as Jordan Maxwell, Michael Zarian, and all these others, is an ardent critic of the Illuminati, but presents the myriad speculations of theosophy as the truth being suppressed. All his main teachings are theosophical. His descriptions of Atlantis in 1992's Love Changes Everything are clearly indebted both to Blavetsky and Bailey. Also derived from the tradition of theosophy is the central theme of Ike's conspiracy theory, of course, his reptilian hypothesis. According to both Sitchin and Ike, humans are the result of a genetic experiment carried out by a race of reptilian aliens called Ananaki. The Ananaki are analogous to the Anakim uh, of the Book of Genesis. The quote, fallen angels who supposedly intermarried with the female descendants of Cain to produce a race of giants. The myth, which was associated with the Jewish Kabbalah, contributed to the development of the theory of Aryan race, whose civilization of Atlantis was supposedly destroyed by the flood, after which they fled to the mountain of Asia. There, according to Blavetsky, their influence resulted in the rise of Tibetan Buddhism a theory that particularly fascinated the Nazis. The same legend has contributed to the ancient astronauts' hypothesis, or, quote, white gods theory. The belief that ancient cultures like those of the Egyptians and the, the Mayas of South America were visited by Caucasian civilizers who were ignorantly worshipped by primitive peoples as gods, as popularized by authors like Graham Hancock. However, as noted by Tyson Lewis and Richard Kahn, quote, while Ike draws up Sitchin's ancient astronomer theory, he develops it in favour of his own new age and conspiratorial agenda, end quote. Through the encouragement of wars, genocide, sexual perversions, the black magic ritual and sacrifice, Ike believes the Ananaki release large amounts of negative energy, which is then absorbed into an Anakai waiting in the fourth dimension. Needing overseers of their human slaves, Ike claims that the Ananakai interbred with another alien race, commonly referred to as the Nordics, because of their blonde hair and blue eyes. The resulting, quote, superhybrids are none other than the Aryans who inhabited Atlantis. Ike writes in The Biggest Secret, quote, the Brotherhood which controls the world today is the modern expression of the Babylonian Brotherhood of Reptile Aryan Priests and Royalty. Their reptilian characteristics, which, quote, top-down control emotionless, cold-blooded attitudes and obsession with ritualistic behaviour and so on, end quote, is directly related to fascist militarism, technocratic rationalism and racism. According to Ike, the Aryans, like their reptilian forebearers, can also shapeshift and have uh, been Sumerian kings. They could have been Sumerian kings, they could have been Egyptian pharaohs, and more recently, American presidents and British prime ministers, including George Washington and George W. Bush and the Queen Mother herself or Queen Elizabeth or the royal family, who was, quote, seriously reptilian. Ike took both his focus on extraterrestrials and the protocols of Zion from Behold a Pale Horse, written in 1991 by William Cooper, who was associated, of course, with the American militia movement. In the Robots' Rebellion, Ike refers repeatedly to the Protocols, claiming they were not the work of the Jews, but of Zionists, and calling them the, quote, Illuminati Protocols, and defining Illuminati as the, quote, Brotherhood Elite at the top of the pyramid of secret societies worldwide. End quote. 
Ike's endorsement of the protocols in the Robots Rebellion and The Truth Shall Shake You Free, uh, written in 1995, led his publisher to stop handling his books, whereby he has been self-published ever since then. So what is this guy ultimately doing? What's he up to? Either intentionally or inadvertently. According to Nicholas Godric Clark, author of the book Black Sun, quote, it is clear from Ike's book that he is a transmitter of this information rather than its originator, who is then guiding Ike and his new age, following towards the beliefs of the millenarian conspiracy cults. He remarks that recent investigations by Matthew Kalman and John Murray of Open Eye magazine suggest that far-right and neo-Nazi groups are possibly exploiting Ike to penetrate the green and new age movements. Political research associates have described Ike's politics as quote a mishmash of most of the dominant themes of contemporary neo-fascism mixed in with a smattering of topics called from the US militia movement, end quote. Ike also or has endorsed or recommended anti-Semitic and far-right publications such as Spotlight and On Target. Interestingly enough, Ike has also been closely associated with anti-Semitic New Age periodicals such as Rainbow and Arc Nexus magazine, which is financed by far-right activists and affiliated with the National Front. In his book The Robots Rebellion, Ike calls Nexus incomparable and excellent. Nexus range of topics cover prophecies, UFOs, Big Brother, the unexplained, suppressed technology, hidden history and more. Although formerly concerned primarily with green issues and third world causes, Nexus took up the subject of the US Patriot Movement under its new editor, Duncan M. Rhodes. So what has the alternative right wing of politics got to do with this? And other of these conservative fronts in politics and mainstream alternative media? Fox's founder, Knight of Malta, Rupert Murdoch himself, has been a member of the Cato Institute founded by the Koch brothers. Murdoch has a long history of lending the weight of his media empire to the service of propaganda for CIA covert operations. Murdoch was also close personal friends with Roy Cohn, who first introduced him to President Ronald Reagan in 1983. Cohn had one interest when he brought Murdoch and the Reagan together, quote, and that was that at least one major publisher in this country would become and remain pro-Reagan, end quote. He wrote in a letter to senior White House aides in 1987. The letter noted that Murdoch then owned, quote, the New York Post, over one million, third largest and largest afternoon, New York Magazine, Village Voice, San Antonio Express, Houston Ring Papers, and now the Boston Herald, and internationally influential London Times, etc., etc. According to Cohen, quote, Mr. Murdoch has performed to the limit up through and including today. Michael McManus, the deputy assistant to the president, responded to Cohen to share their high regard for Murdoch and the appreciation they had for the, quote, importance of what he is doing, end quote. Murdoch, with his business affluence in so-called news reporting, is much more of a scheming con man than anything else. In 1994, Murdoch described a plan to the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, under President Bill Clinton, to launch Fox News as a radical new television network. Unlike the free established networks who catered to the same centrist audience, Murdoch's network would follow the model of the tabloids that he published in Australia and England. Hunt told Jane Mayer, quote, What he was really saying was that he was going after a working class audience. He was going to carve out a base, what would become the Trump base, end quote. Hunt recalled the conversation, quote, This person's made a huge mark in two other countries, and he had entered our country and was saying, I'm going to break up the three-party oligopoly 
that has governed the most important medium of communication for politics and policy in this country since the Second World War. Thus, the rise of the conservative alternative news and media sources can be traced back to the founding of the Human Events newspaper, Regnery Publishing, and the National Review back in the 40s and 50s. Regnery Publishing has also been in the habit of creating bestsellers by artificially boosting sales, a deceptive practice that seems to be common among conservative booksellers. Sarah Pack spent 63000 to purchase Going Rogue, and according to a Federal Election Commission filing, America by Heart was offered to donors with a $100 contribution. Mitt Romney uh, boosted sales of his book by requiring various schools, think tanks, and institutions to buy thousands of copies in exchange for his speeches. When Regnery published Mark Levlin's 2009 book, Liberty and Tyranny, the Senate Conservatives Fund Pack spent 427000 to buy copies, which they distributed to donors who gave them $25 or more to elect conservative candidates. Again, the Conservative Book Club gave away copies of Anne Coulter's book Godless, The Church of Liberalism, if you uh, bought two other books. Regnery donates books to non-profit groups affiliated with Eagle Publishing, which also owns Regnery, and gives the books as incentives to subscribers to newsletters published by Eagle. The counterfeit presentation of popularity goes on, of course. The story about Koch brothers, yeah. that, that's a lie, that they never participate in helping you out with uh, Project Veritas. We don't disclose our donors. Okay, I mean, it. for all you know, Hillary Clinton is funding us. It doesn't matter. Well, that would change the story. That, it, now, it, now you got Babylon B's got a story to but write it wouldn't, about you. But it wouldn't change the story because the, re, the things that we're presenting are real. It's not as much the motive or, or your political agenda. Yeah. It's that you tell a deliberate untruth. Is this a pure crusade you have against the left or is anybody that does... Uh, uh, uses their power against people to manipulate. I think we need to define these things. When we say side, what do we mean? When we say left, I'm not even sure what that means anymore because I have the FBI working with the New York Times. Is that left wing? Here's the irony of them saying I go after the left by exposing CNN. There, there's an admission there. Are you saying that CNN is left? Are you saying the New York Times is left? Is the FBI left? Is our Federal Bureau of Investigation left? Are our pharmaceutical companies left? Is this guy left? Together, you could very much say that this network has cultivated bigotry through paranoia about political correctness and, quote, liberal bias and mainstream media to channel pent-up frustrations towards what they call the, quote, establishment, to denounce, quote, big government in order to advance neoliberal policies. The intent to create continuous discord with this idea that the government or political dialectic of division is the only means to exist in our modern society becomes ever more clear when we look into another branch of this expansive network, such as the phenomena of Alex Jones and his show Infowars and its ultimate purpose, as it seems. Jones has actually admitted on multiple occasions that he comes from a CIA and Army Special Forces family. Quote, let me just tell you something. I grew up in Dallas, Texas, with my family doing things like uh, helping take in East German defectors, okay? Whenever I go to a family reunion, half the people in the room are former or retired CIA. And do you know what they tell me? They tell me I'm dead on, 100% absolutely right. End quote. Jones claims that he's often asked by recently retired generals or former special forces colonels or current Delta Force people, some of them have been on his show, they ask what intelligent agencies he's been with. While his answer is consistently no, Jones explains, quote, on the other hand, I do have branches of different agencies actually trying to couple with what we're doing to resist the globalists. And I'm not working with some agency in an official capacity taking orders. It doesn't work like that. It's just people that also want to resist this. It's like V for Vendetta, where everybody doesn't need to get orders. They'll just show up at the same time, end quote. You know, I have to probably say that I have major Masonic roots. I have never been part of a Masonic lodge. 
Uh, I've never taken Masonic oaths or rituals. Uh, a lot of my family, uh, just Texas was pretty much Masonic through and through, was Masonic, high level Masonic. So it's the old time religion. And all it is is a university study of religions, of philosophy, and of building, and of mathematics, and of agrarian systems, because they didn't just bring anybody in to teach them the, 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 the knowledge of warfare, the knowledge of science, the knowledge of culture. Universities were called mystery schools going back to Egypt, basically. And so what you see as Masons today is just those schools going on. And there have been hundreds of different variants and groups and Rosicrucian orders within the Masons and the Illuminati uh, founded in Germany was a counter Illuminati to the real Illuminati that was just called itself the Enlightenment and then in Latin Illuminati, but it, it didn't call itself Sir Francis Bacon, all of that, hundreds of years before the Jesuit priest Adam Weishaupt. The modern Illuminati was a Catholic spinoff in an attempt to take over the Illuminati and the Rosicrucians. And, and yes, undoubtedly my family on both sides on the Mayflower, hardcore Protestants, you could say Rosicrucians. This country was founded by real Rosicrucians, not the Rosicrucians you see out there today. And so undoubtedly, um, if you want to say it, I mean, I would say I come out of a classical Enlightenment family of what you would call real Illuminati, uh, real Enlightenment. And I'll just say it here. And everybody asks me who I am. I'll tell you. But again, more suspicious activity, as we could see, like Alex Jones's film called Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement and New World Order has been produced by Disinformation Company. The bizarre irony is that in a discordant sense, disinformation seems to produce just that, disinformation. Richard Mensker, who is inspired by Alistair Crowley and who maintains strong ties with the Discordians and Chaos Magicians, founded the disinformation company to be a, quote, magic business, and explained, quote, magic, defined by Alistair Crowley as the art and science of causing change and conformity of will, has always been the vital core of all of the projects we undertake at the Disinformation Company, whether via our website, publishing activities, or our TV series. The idea of being able to influence reality in some beneficial way is what drives our activities. I've always considered the Disinformation Company Limited and our various activities to constitute a very complex spell. Alex Jones is very much a genius when it comes to this stuff. The idea of info wars is exactly that. The will of war against your mind over information for the sake of conformity and magic, if you will. To put you into a state of paranoiac codependency with his network of belief and worship. And thus causing change in conformity of will, of course. What has this got to do, though, with... Your authentic truth, or the authentic truth, your sovereignty. As with all that has been said in the beginning with this, it is a conspiracy, conspiracy, a double blind, a co-opting of truth, in a new disguise, to divert and to discord. Another prominent so-called truth fighter, host from Fox, of course, Murdoch, is news host Tucker Carlson. He also has jumped on the uh, COVID-19 conspiracy bandwagon, but instead of highlighting the real role of the likes of Bill Gates and his collusion with the WHO and Big Pharma in the real world and the, the, what it actually really means, which is most important, it instead becomes an opportunity, like for most of these people, to, as usual, to peddle the political game and neoliberal politics by characterizing the imposed measures as part of a left agenda to expand the powers of the government. This is, of course, like most others in this network, to only recruit or is a process to only recruiting or converting people away from the non-political truth that exists and for you to be maintained within a political governmental direction. As could be said, this could be what all such of these pundits are playing at when under this role of the conspiritual banner, knowingly or not, that the conspiritual movement is to be the reflourishing of a new form of right-wing politics, and most of it stems and exists inside 
the right-wing movement of conspiracy, a convergence with the New Age to advocate neoliberal policies. We ultimately need to be suspicious of the people at play who, quote, claim to have the truth. We need to stop giving in to wanting, seeking, and desiring a leader like a slave when you are that leader within. We are those leaders within. We have sadly been brought up like this on a vast scale to seek out leadership so that we are told what to do. For the claim of having that truth creates a foundation for ideologues. And to create what can be developed from an ideology is then co-opting the truth itself to then use it and abuse it and not to have it stand for what it is alone. Making it into something else that it is not. This is what political pundits do, commentators who work through a false lens of anti-world perception whereby the stepping stones of judgement and analysis are of policy than of reality. Don't fall for the crowd that represents the people who don't follow the crowd. That is the phenomena of the conspiritual, to cage away the truth back into an updated paradigm of doublespeak so that the truth does not set us free so that we continue to allow a dialectic of hidden chess to play upon our backs blind.